Hello, Bava from PTC or Port Terra Conglomerate here. We are an Australian industrial conglomerate offering everything from mining and salvaging through to all your repair, rearming and refueling needs. We are here with our first video to give you an overview of one of our favourite multi-role workhorses. Whether you love it or hate it, we all know it, the Crusader Mercury Star Runner. Over the course of this video, we will cover the ship's lore, her overall feature set, specifications and how PTC as an organisation likes to use the ship. As a bonus, we will also try and draw some links to real-world vehicles that fulfil a similar role to how PTC likes to use the MSR. In terms of lore, the old girl was created as a multi-purpose data runner slash transport vessel, able to defend herself by and large with a generous cargo bay which was aimed to facilitate the carrying of cargo and some vehicles which were there to aid with the militia work and the last mile delivery of data packets just to give it that competitive edge in the data running market in environments where traditional spacecraft might fare a little bit more poorly. When it comes to sales, she didn't have the smoothest entry into the market, with her being from a, comparatively speaking, newer manufacturer. However, Crusader persisted as they felt they could see a gap in the data runner market for a larger ship that was capable of operating in more remote or frontier areas. I mean, have you seen her fuel tanks or how many rovers she can carry? With this lukewarm reception in mind, Crusader felt that they couldn't just talk the talk or splash the PR dosh around, but they'd actually have to walk the walk as well. Which is where a little something called the Abel Baker Challenge pops up. Now, I'm sure most of us have heard of a real-world race called the Dakar Rally. This is basically the Star Citizen equivalent of that, just with more lasers and a little bit less sand. Taking place in the Baker system, which was discovered in 2522, it's an endurance race, the course shifting between three of the four planets in the system each time the race is run, with but a mere 24 hours heads up as to the track's layout and its location. For a tad more context, the Baker system consists of two stars of the K-Class and four uninhabited planets. In addition to this, there is the settlement Zenya, a Kovalek shipping hub, a GIO and a Shubin mining outpost. It's best to think of it as a system where people travel through between UEE and Xi'an empires rather than somewhere people decide to willingly go to. Now, the three planets the race swaps between are Baker 1, a doomed planet so fiercely attacked by the binary stars, its core has partially been exposed and is predicted that it will be pulled into one of the stars in the blink of an eye in about 150 million years. Baker 2. Baker 2 hates everyone and everything. Whilst it is situated almost perfectly in the green old Goldilocks band, this dirt ball would be ideal for terraforming if not for one teeny tiny issue. It's not really anything other than a road hump if you don't mind the high pressure, poisonous and toxic atmosphere. So caustic are the odorous vapours on this planet that spacecraft that have had the temerity to intrude upon it have been heavily damaged, if not lost, to this toxic gas ball. And well, Baker 3 saw the Titanic film and figured it could have a crack. If there was ever a case of something now having a taste for blood, this is about it. It's a nice giant, and its atmosphere is white with deep veins of blue. And sadly for ships in the area, its circumference is actively expanding creating a plethora of navigational hazards as its icy surface does its best to imitate a natural claymore or minefield. Great job there, Baker 3. Great job. 
Baker's system being more off the beaten path and this race not entirely being legal, the use of weapons is, shall we say, allowed, but not outright authorized, with shooting to kill being viewed as a less than tolerable move, you know, below the salt, shall we say. Especially if you're caught. If, however, you don't get caught, well, who's to say it wasn't a really, really hot piece of ice hitting the ship repeatedly? Now, with the above in mind, the fact that the Mercury Star Runner was able to complete the race twice gave it a significant amount of credibility with orders from all comers and all corners flooding in. Now on to the ship specifics themselves, and I suppose we should begin with the description of the ship from Crusader. The Mercury ticks all the boxes required of a multi-purpose courier vessel, and then some. From the near impenetrable onboard data encryption with kill switches, to the massive cargo hold, it's battle ready, it's uniquely stylish, and built for speed. Whatever you're transporting, there's no safer or more secure vessel. I'll also draw attention to the mentions of the ship being used by various militias, and if we were to hazard a guess, this would be in likely roles such as localized AWACS, acting as a flight lead for a fighter patrol wing, a light gunship, or a frontier light patrol dropship, thanks to that generous cargo hold. As for the MSR's overall size and specific features, she's basically a frisbee of a ship. 56 metres long, 51 metres wide, and but a mere 16 metres tall. Her main features are the servers for data running, her comfortable living quarters, and her shielded storage areas as well as that generous cargo hold. On to weaponry we find six size three repeaters spread across three turrets, one top, one bottom, and one for the pilot, with her having a remarkably flexible, if limited, missile payload, being able to stretch from 16 size one missiles through to quad size three missiles for a little bit more punch. In terms of her defensive aspects, her turret arcs really aren't too shabby with her upper turret being able to elevate to about 60 degrees and being able to depress to between 5 to 10 degrees below the horizon. This in conjunction with the bottom turret, meaning there's a nice band around the ship where both turrets are able to focus fire. The bottom turret, whilst not able to look above the horizon, can depress itself to about 80 degrees. In terms of countermeasures, she's got 48 flares and 5 chaff. Nothing exactly remarkable or stand out, but I'd take it over what the Redeemer packs. In terms of her shields, she's got dual size 2 shields in a bubble config, giving you about, when fully upgraded, 10,000 shield HP to the front and 10,000 shield HP to the back after the 20%-ish buff size 2 shields got a patch or two ago. To get specific about her cargo, she's got room for 114 SCU. Her min crew is two people, and her max is three as per CIG, although PTC likes to run with a fourth crew member acting as the weapons systems officer, serving to designate targets for the pilot and gunners, as well as aiding with situational awareness. In terms of handling, it's best to think of the old lady as a high-powered speedboat, great acceleration and speed, less than stellar upwards or downwards strafe, but a fantastic ability to roll and side strafe. As one may have surmised from the name, the Mercury Star Runner is pretty belly nippy. Her SEM speed is a swift 215 meters a second, which is class leading for a ship of her size, and her afterburner allows her to reach a blistering 1287 meters a second. This means she can only really be caught by the Aegis Avenger family, the Anvil F8 Lightning, the Drake Buccaneer, 
the Drake Herald, the Carteral, the Kruger P-72, the Miss Grazer family, the Mustang Gamma and Omega, and the Origin M50 and 350R. As for her other flight parameters, her pitch, yaw, and roll to be specific are 30 degrees per second, 30 degrees per second, and 125 degrees per second, respectively. Her fuel capacities are 4,850,000-ish litres of hydrogen and 9,740 litres of QT fuel, really allowing you to slap in an XL1 drive and not give a hoot about the fuel consumption, at least until you have to pay that hydrogen bill. <clears throat> Less said about that one, the better. As a final aspect of her costs and logistics, with regards to my early comments about the fuel, her claims times and costs are as follows. Standard, without being expedited, is 14 minutes 24 seconds. Expedited is 4 minutes and 47 seconds. And her expedited cost is a smidge over 7,000 AUEC at 7,197 to be specific. Here at PTC, the MSR is used, and I'm sure our mechanics and logisticians would argue, abused in a wide variety of roles, including cargo transport, localized AWACS flight lead slash light gumption, and data running once available. As far as real-world equivalents are concerned regarding the MSR, two platforms came to mind, with the MiG-31 covering the MSR in combat and the Grumman C2 Greyhound covering cargo, transport, and the data running aspects. The MiG-31 was designed as an interceptor for bombers, cruise missiles, helicopters, and UAVs, as well as being able to act as an escort and an ad hoc AWACS platform in areas where coordinating ground radars or SAM platforms are not present. With the MSR's speed and sensors, coupled with PTC's choice to have a fourth crew member employed as a WSO, we feel that this platform is the closest real-world equivalent when taking into account her role and her powerful radars that allow her to operate independently of dedicated sensor platforms such as the Terrapin and the Hornet Tracker, or satellite or ground-based radar installations such as the comm stations. The Grumman C-2 Greyhound is a utility aircraft that was used by the US Navy in a variety of roles, focusing on carrier onboard delivery, aka critical logistics necessary to support carrier groups, with the in-game equivalent of this being remote or relatively undeveloped militia outposts. Cargo in this sort of a situation could cover everything from jet engines, mails and stores to passengers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have taken something away from it in terms of the ship's performance, her role, or her lore. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, or a comment outlining your thoughts on the video or any interesting tidbits you can think of down below. This is Bavar from PTC, signing off.